Hi you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm in a new background or just in a different part of my house. So hopefully it's not echoing and I will not know until I watch this back. So um, I kind of just wanted something a little bit less distracting um, and honestly just a change of scenery. So here I am. Um, I received a comment from someone asking me to read slash go over slash explain the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. So that is what this is going to be about. And I can't remember the person's name like without looking at it, but I just want to say thank you for uh, writing that comment. And I hope that you get something from this video and I hope that anybody watching this video gets something from it. But I learned something new, like going over this before I went to hit record, and it's just really cool. So thank you for, um, just thank you for your comment, thank you guys for your engagement and comments, and um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start. So um, like I've said in a few videos, like I'm not some like Bible expert, I just really love Jesus. and. Um, I am very passionate about explaining scripture or at least the things that I know about it because I never had anybody explain it to me or really go in depth with me about the Bible and why I should read it and what things mean, etc. Um, so hopefully this helps and I feel like I've been bouncing around a little bit, um, in scripture and I'm praying on just like going through Genesis on here um, just because I learned a, I mean I learned a lot from the Bible as a whole but I remember when the Lord really like I remember when the Lord really like started to deliver me from some things that Genesis was very vital and me kind of understanding why God does things the way he does. Like he's God, he can do what he wants. And I know that our, like his ways are not our ways, but I think Genesis does a really good job of obviously explaining creation and, you know, like sin entering into the world. But you can, you can see the patterns of people, the patterns of family, the betrayal, the, it's like, the more you read Genesis, especially now as an adult and somebody that is not, um, I guess, at surface level with their faith, I, I don't, I hope that this is making sense, but um, I feel like Genesis it does a really good job of, it, it's just easier to understand humanity. I think that's the easiest way for me to put it without going off on a tangent. Um, so we are going to start in Genesis 19 with this video because this is specifically about Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, so I'm going to read from the NLT Bible per usual. And here we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to read. I guess I am going to read the whole chapter. Um, I'm going to try to. No, I'm not gonna read the whole chapter. So I'm gonna read um, up into verse 29 um, because that's specifically what this video is about. So I don't want to branch out or confuse anybody or whatever. So here we go. All right. That evening, the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom. Lot was sitting there and when he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, come to my home to wash your feet and be my guest for the night. You may then get up early in the morning and be on your way again. Oh no, they replied, we'll just spend the night out here in the city square. But Lot insisted, so at last they went home with him. Lot prepared a feast for them, complete with fresh bread made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you and you can do with them as you wish. 
but please leave these men alone for they are my guests and are under my protection. Stand back, they shouted. This fellow came to town as an outsider and now he's acting like our judge. We'll treat you far worse than those other men and they lunged toward Lot to break down the door. But the two angels reached out, pulled Lot into the house and bolted the door. Then they blinded all the men, young and old, who were at the door of the house, so they gave up trying to get inside. Meanwhile, the angels questioned Lot, do you have any other relatives here in the city? They asked, get them out of this place. Your sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone else, for we are about to destroy the city completely. The outcry against this place is so great, it has reached the Lord and it has sent us to, and he has sent us to destroy it, excuse me. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughter's fiancés, quick, get out of the city, the Lord is about to destroy it. But the young men thought he was only joking. At dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. Hurry, they said to Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Oh no, my Lord, Lot begged, you have been so gracious to me and saved my life and you have shown such great kindness, but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up to me there and I would soon die. See, there's a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. All right, the angel said, I will grant you your request, but um, I, will, I will grant you your request. I will not destroy the little village, but hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. This explains why the village was known as Zor, which means little place. Lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them, along with the other cities and villages of the plain wiping out all the people in every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him and she turned into a pillar of salt. Abraham got up early this, that morning and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain toward Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as columns of smoke rose from the cities like smoke from a furnace. But God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. I'm sorry, I paused one time because God definitely clicked something in my head that I did not think about. Um, I'm not going to share it because it's very personal, but okay. Um, all right, so I just read um, the whole chapter from the NLT Bible and I'm going to kind of like go through and explain. Um, I'm kind of just, I think hopefully this is easier than me like reading, explaining, reading, explaining. I'm just gonna do it this way. Um, okay, so just a little bit of background without going all over the place. Um, Abraham is Lot's uncle and Abraham in verse, I'm sorry, in chapter 18 was interceding for Sodom. He was interceding for the city that his nephew lived in. Um, earlier in Genesis, they were kind of walking together, but long story short, without going into detail, they had to separate. And this is, this is why I'm going to go through Genesis because it's hard, like everything kind of connects. So just bear with me. Um, this is just for the sake of Sodom and Gomorrah. So chapter 18, verse 20, it says, so the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. Verse 23, it says, Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? So when I was reading this before I cut the camera on to make this video, I Googled like, okay, when did Abraham ask God to save Lot? But it clicked in my mind um, at the end of 18, basically Abraham is like, are you gonna destroy a city if there's 50 righteous people in it? Okay, are you gonna destroy a city if there's 45 righteous people in it? Okay, are you gonna, so he's asking God these questions about 
destruction. Like he's asking God these questions about, okay, so he doesn't, it doesn't say it like, are you going to destroy the city if Lot is there? Like it's not, it's not that blunt, but Abraham is interceding for the city and he keeps asking God like a little more than 10 verses worth of, are you gonna destroy the city if there's 35 people, 30 people, 25 people, 20 people, and, and the numbers get smaller and smaller. So verse 32, um, chapter 18, verse 32, it says, finally, Abram said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Suppose only 10 are found there. And it says, and the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. And when the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way and Abraham returned return to his tent. And then chapter 19 begins. So I just wanted to talk about this briefly and then we'll go into chapter 19 because when you're interceding for people, it matters. And I'm not gonna cry, honestly, because I've done my makeup because I was tired of coming on here looking like I clean up outside every day, all day because I don't, but that's fine. Um, but when you intercede for people, um, whether it's people at your job, people at your church, you know, I mean, whether there's something going on in their lives. Um, and I mean, I live in the United States and we should definitely be praying for this country. Um, and I know people are doing that because it's something that God has, I don't want to say put on my heart about the United States, but he's done a very good job over the last couple of years, just really emphasizing how good we have it over here regardless of the circumstances regardless of politics regardless of just a lot of the i guess things that we would complain about um so our prayers matter and i know i've said that before but maybe someone needs to hear that like i need to hear that our, our prayers matter um and just because we may not be able to see it in front of us right now um they just they matter um okay so going into chapter 19 um the two angels came to the city of sodom um basically to report back to god if you will about what was going on in the city and if the sin in the city was as bad as um as bad as god thought it was um, because if it is as bad as he thinks it is, he's going to destroy it. And if not, then he wants to know. That was from verse, um, excuse me, chapter 18. So the angels basically say, we'll stay outside. Not a big deal. Lot's like, no, 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 come on inside. So they go and stay with Lot. Um, so verse four, before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. So... Okay, I'm going to read the rest of this little section. Um, verse 5, they shouted to Lot, where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. So, I heard in a sermon, um, this was during a time that the Lord was delivering me from just a lot of things and just opening my eyes to a lot of things. And I was just receiving like, knowledge after knowledge like just I was watching so many sermons and it's just like it it was just I don't even know how to explain it but anyway what was said in the sermon was that the spirit of lust is never satisfied and lust does not just have to be like just sex it can be a lust for power a lust for money a lust for things um lust is I guess I don't know I guess explaining it, it could kind of be like greed in a way but like for example if you have a lust for power you're not gonna stop and you're gonna do anything that you can do to get to the top, right? If you have a lust for money, then you're gonna work nonstop and basically like, you can kind of lose yourself in your job and numbers don't end. So like, you'll be working forever, right? And um, so in this particular story, this is, it's not uncomfortable, but it's just, I just have to say it how I have to say it. Um, these people are, extremely lustful and they are I know in other parts of the Bible it says that um I think it specifically says women it's something about I'm, I'm sorry I'm not 
I'd have to if I if I can put it in a comment I will um, I'll put it in a comment because I am not gonna have time to edit this on my MacBook but um, it says that women forfeit natural sex or people forfeit natural sex I, I have to figure out the exact scripture how they word it but basically it's like people that are lustful forfeit natural sex for I'll put the scripture in the in the comment because I'm not explaining it right. But basically, these people are super lustful. They have seen these angels, which when you think about it, angels don't look like human beings. So it's a little sketch. Like they're like banging on Lot's door, like, hey, we want to sleep with these angels. That's weird. Like they're they're out there. So wherever they are mentally or wherever these people were, like they are not. It kind of reminds me of like The Walking Dead. You know how, <laughs> you know how when people in the, like if you've ever seen The Walking Dead, these people find a shelter and it's like if they make too much noise or if they do something wrong or um, I guess like, it's like, I don't know if it's like if they smell blood. I don't know what, I don't, I haven't watched in a really long time, but it's like they make one wrong move or they're seen by one of the walkers or whatever, then like they just surround the house until they can get in and then the people have to try to escape, right? So that's kind of what it reminds me of. But it says the men of Sodom, not women, it, it, the, the men want, angels are male, so the men want the men. That's where we're at, okay? And so they came from all over the city and surrounded the house. So I don't know where you live, but basically imagine all the males from your city seeing these angels, who are massive, by the way, because how would everyone know that they're there? This is blowing my mind. I was not planning on elaborating like this. Um, and sorry, the light from my window is just like beaming on my face. Um, but angels are huge. So they are seen by all the men in the city and all the men obviously lust over them and they all surround Lot's house and are banging on the door. Hey, open up. We want to have sex with the angels. That's the quick blunt summary of it. Um, so verse six, Lot is like going outside to talk to them like, hey, like I'll give you my daughters. Like, don't, don't do that. Like, and he's, and not that he's like trying to like, I guess like sacrifice his daughters in a way. It's just that these people are so desperate and they're so lustful that Lot is willing to, it's kind of uncomfortable to talk about because I don't want to think about it, but basically he's, like I can give you my daughters to have sex with, but please don't, don't do this. <laughs> like, um, so it says from verse seven, please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Um, homosexual lifestyles are not of God. Um, there's not really another way to put that because that's what scripture says. And that's it. Fornication is also not of God. There's not another way to put that because that's what scripture says. Just throwing that out there. Um, so in verse eight, it says, look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you. You can do with them as you wish, but please leave these men alone for they are my guests and are under my protection. Um, so in verse nine, it says, stand back. Um, Cause Lot isn't from there. Um, so they're basically like, get out of the way. This guy just came into our town thinking that he's going to tell us what to do. Um, and so they kind of start like crowding the door and someone says, we'll treat you far worse than those other men. Um, which I don't really want my mind to go there. So we're going to move on. But if you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, um, so the angels reach out, they pull a lot inside and they close the door and they blind all of the men who were at the door of the house um was this is kind of interesting to me because when we were reading about samson and delilah it's like his eyes kind of caused him trouble in a way especially with women um and so it's just interesting that this is kind of a similar situation for these guys and they were all blinded so they could essentially no longer lust anymore um so Lot is back inside. Basically, all these men are blind, so they gave up trying to get inside the house. And 
the angels ask Lot, basically like, is there anybody else here that's related to you? Because we're about to, we're, we're about to get rid of all this. That that's sorry. I'm just explaining it in like regular people language, but um, he's like, he said, they say, do you have any other relatives here in the city? Get them out of this place. Your sons-in-law, daughters, or anyone else are about to destroy the city completely. The outcry of this place is so great. It has reached the Lord and God has sent, and he sent us to destroy it. So Lot runs to tell his daughter's fiancés. This is so crucial, y'all, because I know as a woman, like, I can't speak for everybody, but there are a lot of us out there that we just want this Prince Charming and we just want this guy to sweep us off our feet and it's going to be great. And I don't know about y'all, but um, if I'm being honest, like, the housewife thing is calling me. I ain't even going to lie. You know, who really wants to work? I mean, some of y'all want to work. That's good. Good for y'all, but y'all speak for yourself. I'm just kidding. So, um, these lot is telling his daughters, future husbands, his sons-in-law, Hey, we need to go. And essentially they think he's kidding. And so the next day, um, and you have to think of like the time frame of all this, right? So the angels give Lot a command. Lot goes and relays that message to these guys who are his sons-in-law, potentially. Um, and they don't listen. So the next day, so they had more time. God was gracious, give them more time. Because in reality, he told them to get up and leave. And that's what they should have done. But the next day, the angels are like, hey, Lot, hurry up. Get your wife and your daughters not the sons-in-law anymore. They're they're dropped from the get up and get out because they didn't they didn't believe it. So um Lot hesitated again and the angels end up grab like not grabbing them but like grabbing kind of everybody like grabbing everybody the hand by the hand and rushing them outside the city and that's why it says like for the Lord was merciful because when God tells us to do something like we do it <laughs> like there's no like I don't know I, I know everybody's different but um it's just important to obey what God tells you to do um because obviously in this particular instance there's safety involved and other people involved and ultimately God is going to destroy this city um okay so the angels then sorry I'm kind of paraphrasing but I just want to make sure that this is understood um so in verse 17, it says, when they were safely outside the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you'll be swept away. So then here's Lot again, like, oh no, I can't go to the mountains. Um, and he's like, you know, disaster would catch up to me and I'll soon die. You know, he's asking to go to a small village and they're like, all right, I'll grant your request. I won't destroy the village, but basically like hurry up and go there because I can't do anything until you leave. So... I want to pause here because remember in chapter 18, Abraham was kind of asking God about righteousness in the city. Like, and okay, if there's a few people or like, what is the number of people that would have to be righteous in a city for you to not destroy it? And Abraham's asking about Lot. Like y'all, my brain just like loved that so much because I've never, I didn't notice that until literally 24 minutes ago. Um, so the angels are telling him like i can't do anything like basically the angels can't be obedient to god until lot leaves like i can't do anything until you leave um because lot will save um so lot reaches the village just as the sun was rising or sun was over the horizon and the lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on sodom and gomorrah he utterly destroyed them along with other cities and villages of the plain Wiping out all the people and every bit of vegetation. So there's there's nothing there. It's gone. All of it's gone. People, animals, plants, gone. Um, verse 26, it says, But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him, and she turned into a pillar of salt. All I'm going to say is that um, God's order, if you are... How can, I, how can I word this? If you are in a marriage from the Lord... <laughs> is God, man, woman, child. And how can I put this? Okay, so it says, but Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him. So 
I did not think we were gonna go here. Um, okay, so as a wife, you follow your husband and she did not do that. <laughs> I'm in a different place um, in my house. Uh, so yeah, that's, yeah. She looked back and did not continue to follow her husband. And if that is for you, then you're gonna get it because that's all I'm gonna say about it. So verse 27, Abraham gets up, he sees, he okay, it says he looked out, I'm sorry, he got up early that morning and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain towards Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as columns of smoke rose from the city, like smoke from a furnace. But 20, in verse 29, it says, but God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. So that's where I'm going to kind of stop this video. Um, but I just wanted to add in a little bit further in chapter 19, um, Lot ends up leaving Zor, which is where he asked to go because they told him to go to the mountains. And he was like, no, I can't make it to the mountains. I want to go to this other city. And they were like, fine. Like basically for me, I think they were just like, fine, just go where you got to go. Cause you got to get out of here. But, um, the, ver the first, uh, I'm just going to read it. It says afterward, Lot left Zor because he was afraid of the people there. And he went to live in a cave in the mountains with his two daughters. So regardless of what Lot wanted to do, he still ended up where like God had planned for him to go. Um, so that is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And next time I do this video, I will make sure that these are not on my face. Um, but yeah, I hope that that provided some clarity. It is in Genesis 19. I read out of the New Living Translation. Um, I've said this in previous videos. I think this, this translation, or at least for me, is very clear. It's very direct, very clear, very easy for me to read. Um, the message version is also kind of good if you just want more of like a story, um, depending on like if you have trouble just like, I don't mean to be like funny, like if you have trouble reading, but no, just depending on what you're doing and you can't concentrate, sometimes the message version is good for me. Um, but I hope that that explains it and yeah. That is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. So I hope that helped and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.